welcome to CEO where we promote empowering information about African Africans and correct misrepresentations of African Africans. Today, I'm coming to you to, to talk about how Africa's crisis, it's, um, it's a livelihood around the world and how fellow Africans who collaborate need to be very aware what we support. At the onset of my career, and I'm talking about um, over 20 years ago, I was um, an intern, like a volunteer intern, in a magazine in London. It was a not-for-profit magazine venture, and I came there as an intern. Supported, lived with a British family in, in around, around um, Wimbledon, Rains Park, to be specific, very kind family to me. I was young. I was, um, I think late teens, early 20s, so I needed to stay with a family and they treated me like a daughter. They were kind, you know. The wife was Irish, the husband was um, just British. A white family. I was a, like their daughter. They treated me like a daughter, the kindest. The leans they're called. They're just a family. Love them, love them. And then um, we had board of directors who were kind to me too, really kind to this young African girl who was interning in a magazine outfit in London. The office was on 12 Palace Street. I remember very well. And um, at that time, we used to, I used to hear of riots in Lagos around, you know, around them, the whole the unraveling of the democratic process. There were a series of riots. And the son of one of the, one of the main, I would call, use board of the, you know, members of the board of directors of the organization, the, inter, you know, inter, not-for-profit organization I was interning with was a burden photographer, photojournalist. He wanted a career in photojournalism. He was about my, just slightly older than me and heard of the riots and thought if he went there and was able to get some good shots, it could launch his career. And I was supportive of it. I said, we, we, we walked around, I had some contact because I had interned as a journalist too in, in Nigeria, in Lagos, before I came to London. So we had gotten his visa, he was about to leave, then the riots ended. It was resolved amicably, it was peacefully resolved, there were no fatalities, nothing dramatic. And I could remember we sat together really miserable, I was so sad and thought, oh, so sorry after all you've done. And we're thinking, I wish the riots had stretched on for maybe a week or two, he would have gone there and done his thing and come back. I've always been a very reflective person, it's my personality. At the end of the day, I reflect on what I learned in my day. I've always done that and did exactly that as I got home to my little room in the family I was living with and realized that I was wishing for the worst for my country, Nigeria, so that a young British burden photojournalist who I really liked, whose family I really liked to be good to me, could get some great pictures to launch his career. Um, over 20 years working with colleagues around the world on international humanitarian issues and development issues, I realized this is still the case. Sometimes we bought into a narrative of how Africa should circulate around the world. Crisis in Africa is a livelihood for many around the world. There are many international NGOs that are now on, that have just been created. They are so they are huge humanitarian and development machines that are sustained by an image and a narrative of Africa in continuous and constant crisis. There are young people around the world who are going to university, getting degrees to work in international, develop, international humanitarian systems and international development systems. And most of it sadly is sustained through a narrative, an image in Africa. I think, you know, it's great that we have systems in place that can address crisis when communities everywhere cannot manage them. But I think the solutions for Africa has been designed to sustain livelihoods around the world. So something that happens in Africa is defined differently in the in most parts of the world. Because if it's defined in a particular way, they are experts already on ground to resolve, to, to 
manage them, not resolve them. <laughs> it's amazing that Africa, as we speak today, is least affected by COVID-19, has the least onset sudden disasters, which are the clear terms through which we deploy international humanitarian assistance to countries. But Africa is still dominated by a narrative of humanitarian crisis. Wildfires raging in the United States, political uncertainties in the United States, Belarus ravaged by political violence. Yes, money is too, you know, coups and all. But at the end of the day, the focus is still on presenting Africa as a region of crisis that needs international and international assistance. But no other, most part, other parts of the world are not. And that's because we allow it. That's because Africans are bought into it. And sometimes we are so caught up in the short-term benefit. Yes, I wanted to be supportive of a burdened British photojournalist, especially when his family has been so good to me. So I wanted to be supportive of his career. In, and, and, and in that sense, I was willing to wish my country, Nigeria, to stay in riots and violence for two more weeks so he could get the shots he would need to, to, to launch his career. How often do we get so excited after we've been employed in some of these agencies that we don't question what we know is not true? We perpetuate a narrative and an image of crisis because that is the source of our livelihoods. Do we dare challenge it? I think we can. Some of us have done it. Some of us are doing it. It's not a very popular position to be. It doesn't mean you don't work in those organizations. I've worked actively in international humanitarian and development organizations for close to 25 years, almost 30. And I have questioned the need to present Africa in a particular way, in an undignified manner, to exaggerate our reality to sustain international humanitarian funding, to sustain development aid. I've challenged that because it's not good for the continent. It have not been promoted as swiftly as some others who buy into it, but I'm happy with the role I, I play. I challenge it and I've found allies, allies around the world who quietly say, I'm not necessarily only Africans, I've found allies from Europe who basically say, yeah, I hear you. I think we, we should be able to help each other without humiliating each other with the way we package and present each other. So let's be vigilant. Africa's crisis, Africa's hazards and issues are exaggerated to sustain livelihoods. And I think we could do better as actors, international humanitarian and development actors. I learned my lesson over 25 years ago and I've kept my eyes on the ball. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And stay safe around COVID. Bye.